Hey there, welcome to the table. I um obviously am not at a table at this moment. Uh, a new game came out today on Steam called Panzer Core 2. And I figured uh, I would like to show you this game. This is an awesome game. Uh, or at least Panzer Core 1 was, and I have every expectation that this will also be awesome. I could be premature in saying that. Uh, but um, uh, if you remember the Panzer General games from the 1990s, I was always a huge fan of those. I really love Panzer Core 1. This is Panzer Core 2. So um, there's a few other people who have done videos on these, and um, especially on this game, and they got early access. And they're awful at this game. I mean, when you watch them doing the video, you're just like, oh my god. So I'm hoping I can give this a, a better shot, even though I've never played it. Um, I guarantee you I'm going to do a better job than those fools. But um, uh, anyways, uh, I'm very excited. And yes, we're all trying to pass the time as all this isolationism for the corona stuff is happening. So um, I know it's not a board game. Uh, but I hope uh, some of you who are into wargaming, and a lot of you are, who subscribe and follow my channel, uh, you might still find this interesting. Um, anyways, enough of that. Let's get started. We're going to do a new game here. And we're going to do the campaign, and we're going to do Poland. Now, there's five difficulty settings, and I'm going to do the middle one, which actually gives you a 30% prestige penalty um, this might kill me. I, I don't know. I mean, I probably should start on the lowest one, but we're going to go ahead and do that. There is an advanced options tab. I'm not going to get into all that yet, but um, I'm just going to go with all the default settings. And um, to be quite honest, uh, it's pretty good. The only thing that I'm really interested in is maybe this custom army, because that would let me purchase and deploy my own custom army at the beginning of the game instead of a predefined starting force. <clears throat> I actually think that one is well worth trying to do. Oh, you know what? Let's do that. <laughs> Rather than recommending it, let's just do it. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and... Um, you also have these special challenges, which I don't recommend you do until you um, uh, have actually played this before and, and maybe finished it. But all kinds of really cool options. We're going to go ahead and hit play. <clears throat> Okay, first thing that happens is you have to decide between Poland South, Poland North. And you might be thinking, okay, my gosh, what's the difference? Um, the Field Marshal version of the game, which is the more pricey one, does come with a campaign map. Um, you can It's not built into the game. You have to go into your files and pull it up. But basically, um, you have choices to go left or right, basically. And... It's just going to give you a different set of scenarios. Um, I think it re-merges back again around Paris or something. I, I don't know. I haven't played this yet, so I can't tell you definitively. But <clears throat> basically, uh, you're going to have close quarter combat and sieges in the southern route. And it's going to be more mobile and open ground in the northern. So you, I would think that the northern route would probably be more susceptible to, you know, more open for tanks. Um, whereas the southern route, you're going to need more artillery. Um, so let's go ahead and do Poland North, because we always like tanks. All right, so we're going to be, uh, who should we name ourselves? Why not? And eh, he doesn't have his hat on straight. That sounds about right for me. Okay, so I studied a lot of this before I actually hit record, even though I haven't played the game yet, just because I didn't want to get into analysis paralysis and make you guys wait forever. But basically, <clears throat> you get two points. And if you've ever played like Master of Orion, <clears throat> which I know many of you may not have, but it's just a nice point of reference. Basically, I can spend those two points to get a positive trait, which is on the left side. Or I can take a negative trait, which is on the right side, and that gives me even more points. So, for example, um, you can overstrength your units. So, if you have a tank, normally they have, like, let's say, 10 strength. You can overstrength the tank to go up to 15 strength. And a 15 strength tank is going to be able to overwhelm the enemy a lot more than a 10 strength tank. So, <clears throat> there's going to be some advantages there. But if you're willing to say, okay, you know what, I'm not going to overstrength my units. 
you can check this box and you can see that that two just became a four. So then um, over here, you can choose to like take an, a, a bonus. So like um, Liberator gives us plus 50% prestige for capturing flags. So um, we already took the difficulty where it was minus 30% prestige. So if I take this, I basically just negated that that penalty and gave myself 20% more. <clears throat> and then I have two more points left. So I can say industry connection and deep recon. Now, um, what do they all mean? What do they all do? Uh, I'll try to go through them real quick. The infantry and Panzer General are both the same. Um, uh, boy, it's so hard to explain all this stuff until you've actually seen the game. But um, basically, you're going to have like, let's say you have 36 points of, of what they call core points. So you basically have uh, an army that will go with you from mission to mission, and they will gain experience points along the way. And as you go from one mission to the next, all those experience points and upgrades that you do carry with you, right? So um, you're going to get 36 core points. If you've played Panzer Corps 1, 36 core points meant you could have 36 units. But in this game, that's not true. In this game, you can have a tank that actually takes 10 core points because it's a heavy tank of, you know, it could be a Tiger tank or whatever. So um, a unit could take 10 core points just for one unit. So you could have an army that's filled with heavy upgraded super elite stuff, but then you can't have a whole lot of it. Or you can have an army with a whole bunch of, you know, non-elite, but you can have a whole bunch of it. Well, what these do is they, as you can see here, they give you... Uh, like a tank unit will cost 25% less slots. So obviously if you have a tank that's taking up 12 slots, it's only going to take up eight instead. Um, so that's the whole idea there. Um, so the ones that I picked is I'm choosing to get random prototypes every mission. And um, so how does that work? Well, basically, uh, let's say that you have, and I did read the manual, so I am speaking with some authority on this um, the way this works is like uh, you're gonna start the game and you know, with Panzer twos and maybe the Panzer 38t from Czechoslovakia well obviously the Panzer fours doesn't don't exist yet but um, they will exist once you get to a certain point in time in the game well if you have prototypes there's a chance that you're gonna get the Panzer four early or even a tiger tank early and so that's what this is. And and you need to have 10 units of prototype in order to be able to form an actual unit. So um, maybe the better way to put it is you need to have 10 prototypes in order to form one unit. Because one unit has 10 strength, right? So let's say I have 10 Tiger prototypes, then I can form a Tiger unit. But let's say that Tiger unit takes some losses, like two losses and I need to replenish those two losses. I need two more prototypes. So you need one prototype to basically replenish every unit of strength, and you need at least 10 prototypes to form a 10 strength unit in the first place. I hope that makes sense. It'll make more sense maybe once you see the game. Um, but basically, I'm gonna get 15 to 20 prototypes every single mission, and that's for free. That's in addition to anything else. So I'm trying it. I, it looks really cool. Um, because I like getting stuff early. All right, so uh, the next one, extra prestige, unless you're gonna cheat hack your um, your money in this game, this is always, I think, something you're gonna wanna take. Um, and then this one just suits me so well. Um, all your primary objectives are gonna be permanently revealed, so you're never gonna get surprised. And I really like this because now I can charge in with my troops and not be in fear of you know, discovering some enemy that's going to ambush me. And if a if an objective is not heavily defended, I can see it right away. I can get in there and, and do some damage. Also, um, recon units in this game uh, give an accuracy bonus to all the units that are next to it. And this gives an extra 5% accuracy. It just seems really cool. Now, um, I'm realizing I'm taking forever to go through all these, but basically... Um, there's a whole bunch of really cool customization here. This one gives you a lot of initiative at the start of the game, but then it uh, gradually reduces until you're just getting plus one in initiative. Um, 
I honestly don't know how useful that is, um, but clearly it's going to give you a huge edge at the beginning of the game. And initiative, by the way, lets you attack first. So when you're attacking somebody, you'll get the get your shots in first, and I don't think it's simultaneous in that case. And so if you get in some kills, then when they counterattack, they're not going to be killing you. And so it gives you like a better odds in battle, uh, the initiative. Um, this one, all tanks get plus one movement point, and you can cross minor rivers easier. Uh, I think that's really good. Um, I would definitely recommend that one. Plus 25% experience growth rate. Can't argue about that. This one, you get additional auxiliary slots. Now, auxiliary slots are not your core army. So those are going to be basically, those are army units that are going to just help you for that mission, and then they're going to go away. Um, I don't care for auxiliary slots very much for that reason, but they are perfect for throwing into the cannon fodder. <laughs> you know, you let them go die because they're not important to you. Um, I don't know. I mean, it probably, but an extra 50% is a lot. Um, this one, if you capture equipment, you get twice as much. And you get twice as much prestige for forcing enemies to surrender, which is the only way to capture equipment. Oh, excuse me. So that's something, um, I think this would be interesting, but you're going to have to be really crafty with the game because to get somebody to surrender requires setting the game up and setting your, your positioning yourself. I, I think you need to be a little experienced with the game in order to take advantage of this. But one thing to point out, let's say, you know, you want to get a, a Russian tank as captured equipment. Um, you can do that and it works the same way as prototypes. You need to capture 10 units of a particular equipment in order to form a, a unit of like the t-34 or whatever it is that you're you're forming and then if you want to replace those units you need to have extra replacement points as well so capturing equipment and then being able to use it against them later seems really cool but it also seems so much harder in this game than it did in the previous ones Deadly Grasp is encircled enemies suffer double penalties. If any of you watch my Enemy Action Arden, they actually are using the Enemy Action Arden rules in this game. So every unit has to be able to trace uh, supply back to a supply point, and every unit has a zone of control around it, exactly like Enemy Action Arden. And so it is possible you can cut off an enemy unit's supply tracing. And if you do, that's what's called considered an encircled enemy. Um, flexible command. You can split units in this game. I That's a brand new feature. I've never experienced that before. Um, but uh, this would mean that you don't have to consume slots. You can do it for free. Here we have Killer Team. You start with three additional heroes. I think heroes are very powerful. I don't know how many heroes you're going to get in a regular game versus the need to start with three at the beginning. I have no clue, but um, that's an option. Anti-air units will inflict kills instead of suppressing. And here, friendly unit in a hex cancels any enemy zone of control. So that makes it harder for them to uh, surround you or encircle you, and it also makes it harder for them to find supply routes. And then, like, you have all these negative ones. I'm not going to go through all those at the moment, uh, but I chose the one that um, no overstrength. I mean, not being able to purchase air units seems brutal. But here's the thing. I think if I become uh, experienced with this game, I think I'm going to choose both denied air force and denied artillery. First of all, it'll give me six extra points, which is awesome. And why would I do that? Why would I make it so I can't purchase artillery or air force? because it says you can't purchase them, but it didn't say you can't get prototypes. And it also didn't say you can't capture enemy units. And I think that once you get the hang of, of how prototypes work and how to capture enemy units, you could probably select both of these and not even feel the pain. Well, not a lot at least. Um, but some of these are really bad, like this one. <laughs> you randomly lose movement points and actions attack actions at the beginning of every turn. How awful is that? That's so awful. 
this one, you can't get elite replacements more than three times per mission. I mean, this one might be doable once you get good enough at the game. I, who knows? So I'm not going to go through all of them, but um, uh, we did go through all the benefit ones. I think some of you just want to get into the game, so let's go. I salute your impeccable timing here, General. My telephone call with High Command just finished. Now that the invasion of Poland is I, imminent, we need to discuss your role in I operation. turned the volume down a lot, so I don't know During how much of this you can hear. I will be your primary link to the directives coming from High Command. While my time on the battlefield may be long past, I can still offer you important insights alongside your orders. Now then, on to the business at hand. So our primary objective is to capture these three hexes. As you can see, we're deploying your new Panzer Corps to Yesfo to combine with elements of Kruzhi's 4th Army. Your immediate objective is to cut the Danzig Corridor by advancing to the Vistula River. Our move to link Germany and East Prussia is an obvious one that our enemy will surely predict. But I expect the speed of your advance to take them by surprise, allowing you to intercept their forces before they reach more defensible positions. To fully take control of the corridor, these two major crossings of the Vistula must be occupied. If you seize the opportunity, crossing the Vistula here in a flanking maneuver could make taking your objectives much easier. Good luck on your first combat operation, Herr General. I would hate for it to be your last. Okay, so one of the hardest things about streaming these video games is that the audio from the game, I want it so that you guys can hear it, but at the same time, I don't want it to be like the music to be so loud that you can't hear me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video here just because I want to go and, and test it and, and see how bad I did <laughs> in setting the volume. And I might tweak it a little bit. Uh, hopefully you should have been able to hear the general talking to me. Um, if you didn't, then I'm going to increase the volume just a little bit more. And... Um, and then, of course, maybe just turn down the music volume, because that's usually the most annoying feature. But the basic gist is that we, um, they're basically saying that, uh, you know, this is the Danzig Corridor. And if you remember the geography of World War II, there was this narrow strip of land that Poland had that allowed it to have a port. And, um, and that narrow strip, of course, um, was in between German territory. And, um... And so Germany is basically rushing across that narrow strip. And so troops from the port are going to be coming south to try to intervene. And what he's basically saying is we're going to use our new Blitzkrieg tactics and our fast panzers to get out in front of them and basically intercept them before they have a chance to, to get into position so they can be defensively, you know, stopping us from our advance. So uh, basically we're going to move quicker than them. That's the idea. So um, let me end this video and I will you know play it back just to make sure the sounds sounding okay for me and I might tweak it a little bit and then I will see you all in a few minutes <laughs> 